A psychologist is designing an experiment to test the effectiveness of a new training program for airport security screeners. She wants to begin with a homogeneous group of subjects having an IQ score between 90 and 120. Given that IQ scores are normally distributed with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 16, what percentage of people have an IQ score between 90 and 120? Our first step is to draw a picture. Here's 90, there's 120, and we have a mean of 100. Now this is an in-between problem, so we have to convert this to a z-score and the 120 to a z-score. The first z-score, 90, minus the mean divided by standard deviation, gives us a z-score of negative 0 0.63. The second z-score, 120, minus our mean divided by the standard deviation gives us a z-score of 1.25. Now to find the area in between, we look up the area to the left of 1.25, write that probability down. We look up the area to the left of a negative 0.63, write that probability down, and subtract the two probabilities. And we end up with 0.6301. So to answer the question, the percentage of IQ scores between 90 and 120 is about 63 percent. In this slide, here's some common terms for math symbols. At least is the same thing as saying greater than or equal to. More than is the same thing as saying greater than. Fewer than is the same thing as saying less than. No more or at most is the same thing as saying less than or equal to. Using standard normal distribution, this is the same thing as greater than. Less than or equal to is the same thing as less than. Important phrase that we need to remember would be at least, which means greater than, and also at most, which means less than. Let's try some examples. What is the proportion of the population who have at least an IQ score of 132. First thing that we need to realize is at least means greater than. So we draw our picture. The mean is 100. Here we have our x, 132, and at least means greater than. So from the picture we see that this is less than 0.5. Our next step is to change 132 to a z-score. This ends up being 2.00. And using table 5 we look up 2.00 and we have to subtract it from 1 because it's a greater than and we see that the answer is 0 0.0228. Next example, what is the percent of the population who have an IQ score at most 95? At most means less than, so we draw our picture, means 100 and it's in the middle. 95 is below 100 and we're wanting the area to the left because we want at most and that means less than. Next step, we change 95 to a z-score. Be sure to include the negative sign because 95 is less than the mean. So our z-score will be negative, negative 0.31. Looking up in table 5, we see that the probability of the z being less than a negative 0.31 is 0.3783. What is the probability of having one person with an IQ score no more than 110? No more than 110 means less than. So we draw our picture. Mean is 100 and it's in the middle. 110 and no more means less than. Next step, we change 110 to a z-score. 0.63 we look up 0.63 in table 5 and we see that the probability that z is less than 0.63 is 0.7357 and this agrees with our picture our picture here we knew that the answer had to be more than 0.5 and it is okay there will be certain problems where we actually want to find an x value Okay, in this slide, this gives us the procedure for finding an x. Given a proportion 
or a probability or a percentile or a percent. So our first step, we draw the normal curve and shade in the area corresponding to the proportion, the probability, or the percent or percentile. Second step, we use table 5 to find the z-score that corresponds to the shaded area. Step 3, we use this formula to get the x value. Now I'd like to take just a second to show you where this formula comes from. It actually comes from the z-score. So in this case we want to take the z-score formula and solve it for x. So we need to get rid of mu and we need to get rid of sigma. Now, the easiest way to solve this is to get rid of sigma first and since it's dividing the x we want to do the opposite and multiply. So if we multiply both sides by sigma these sigmas cancel and we're left with z times sigma equals x minus mu and the last step is we want to add mu to both sides and when we add mu to both sides we get this formula x is the mean plus z-score times the standard deviation. Let's do an example. Menza, the high IQ society, provides a forum for intellectual exchange among its members. There are members in more than a hundred countries around the world. Activities include the exchange of ideas through lectures, discussions, journals, special interest groups, and local, regional, national, and international gatherings. The investigations of men members' opinions and attitudes, the assistance to researchers inside and outside Mensa, and projects dealing with intelligence or Mensa. So this is straight from their web page. So the question is, is how do we join? Membership of Mensa is open to persons who have attained a score within the upper 2% of the general population on an approved intelligence test that has been properly administered and supervised. So in other words, anybody can join who has an IQ score that is in the top 2%. Okay, now, from our previous videos, if we do the Stanford Binet, IQ tests, it has a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 16. So we're wanting to find what IQ score do you need to get in order to join Mensa. Okay, we know that the mean is 100, standard deviation 16. We want to find what is the score that you need. Clearly it's above 100. Now, from the problem, we have to score in the top 2% and 2% is the same thing as 0 .0200. 0, 0. Now, table 5 gives us area to the left. This is area to the right. So our first step is we need to find the area to the left. And of course, this is 1 minus 2% or 98% 0, 0.9800. 0. So this is the area that we want to look for in table 5. Here's our formula. We know mu is 100. We know the standard deviation is 16. We need to find the z-score that corresponds to 0 0.9800. So using table 5, looking in the body of the table, we want to find the closest thing to 0 0.9800. 0 0.9800 is in between these two values. It's actually closer to this one. That gives us our z-score. So our row component is 2.0, our column component is 0.05, adding those together our z is 2.05. Going back to the problem, mu is 100, z is 2.05, our standard deviation is 16. Multiplying these two together gives us 32.8, add it to 100, and the score is 132.8. Since I IQ scores are discrete numbers. We round this to 133. So in order to join Mensa, your IQ score would have to be 133 or more. Let's look at another example. What is the IQ score that separates the bottom 20% from the top 80%? Now this is the same thing as saying what is the 20th percentile. Okay, our first step, we draw our picture. In this case, the score is going to be less than 100 because this is the 50th percentile. We are wanting the 20th percentile. 
So this area here is 20%. Using table 5, we're going to find the closest thing to 0 0.2000. And if we look in the table, we see the closest is 0 0.2005. That corresponds to a z of a negative 0.84 substituting our values in the formula. Mu is 100. Our z that corresponds to the bottom 20 percent is a negative 0.84 and then we multiply that by our standard deviation 16. So this is the same thing as 100 minus 13.44 and we get 86.56 which rounds to an 87. So the IQ score that separates the bottom 20 percent from the top 80% is 87. Thanks for watching.